Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby. Here with me is the wonderful Kevin Cahoon from the new Hi. Broadway show, <laughs> Shucked. Uh, Kevin, this show, I, I believe if I heard correctly that you've been working on this for eight years. I the have. The past eight years. Yeah. yeah. And you're the only cast member, I think, from that day one that is still around. So what was it that kept you around? What said, you know, I really need to stick with this show? They couldn't get rid of me. You know, I was hanging <laughs> on the drapes, like just now. <laughs> um, um, when I got the sides for the audition, I knew immediately it's hilarious, sweet, universal. I knew, and it, it, it harkens back to a time, my childhood. I just knew I had to be a part of this show and I was going to do anything I could. And I couldn't get an appointment originally for it. I think they had another idea of the character. I think a bigger, like a Bubba kind of guy. And um, I just, I just begged and I said, please, can I just <laughs> give me three minutes? Give me three minutes. Let me show you what I got. And I got it. Thank God. And uh, yeah, we did a couple of readings and then we did a production in Dallas. And then the production had a major, 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 major overhaul after Dallas. Um, then, you know, through a series of different developmental, you know, uh, potholes. And then we had a pandemic and then, oh, what shows are going to come back after the pandemic? Mm -hmm. It has finally found its right moment. And in the moment, in the time, you think, oh gosh, well, this is never going to happen and this is heartbreaking. But if you just have faith, just have faith, it's going to happen right when it's supposed to happen. April 4th, 2023, which is tomorrow, is the exact right moment for um, this show to tell its story to the world, I think. Yeah. And, you know, you were talking about in the journey to this moment, there's been mm -hmm. overhauls, even your character had a, a different yes. uh, thing originally. So what's been like the most difficult change or biggest change to deal with? Along well, the, the whole structure, Robert Horn, our brilliant, genius, singular book writer, um, put into the show that in Dallas, there was no corn. Uh, the town was not corn. It was just, I know, right? <laughs> Um, I can't imagine it without I, corn now. I, I, you can't because it's a totally different show. It was just a girl's journey, finding herself, leaving town and bringing back someone to meet her family. That's what it was. And this, there's a collective problem in that the corn is dying. So it's their livelihood. It's their existence. And when it dies, the whole community has a problem that they have to fix. So the stakes immediately shoot up past 100 and um that would be the first giant giant shift in the storytelling and my character uh, blossomed in a way he was the county clerk before and so he saw that there was this bad guy who was looking at the acres and the tracks of land and trying to get now he's evolved into this beautiful sort of simple philosopher of the town who runs the radio station he marries people he buries people he's the county he does it all he's kind of a watchdog for the town too um he's just sort of it, it's the simplest purest heart i've ever been given to um portray and i i'm just so grateful that they have allowed me to stay on this long. They have allowed me to be a part of this process. The real, the real blessing of it all is that Robert Horn, Brandy Clark and Shane McAdally, who are the two composers, after all this time, you become dear, dear friends, you know? And, and you, that's the real prize of doing what we do for a living is the people you take away, the people you meet, the mm -hmm. lives you get to, um, be a part of and, and that's really what I'm most grateful for but man yeah. I love going to that theater every night I cannot wait to get back and to you know tell this story in, in Cobb County <laughs> you know? and that's you know Cobb there's so many Robert Horn has put in so many great corn puns and all sorts of puns and yeah. going back to what you said about Peanut's kind of simple philosophy I just lost it every time you have to 
go into your one of your bits where he says, you know what I think, and has his sort of philosophy moments, yes. which are hysterical. How long did it take to sort of nail those with a straight face? I mean, well, it took a long time. And, you know, Robert is so brilliant that he has he would come up with five new ones. Let's put these in tonight. So, and they're not connected to any plot. So I would have to make a list for each scene, like, okay, it's pretzel, bullet, and movie. So just keywords that right before I go on stage, I'm like pretzel, bullet, movie, pretzel, bullet, movie, go. So that I would remember what our order was gonna be that night. And there's something that's so um, satisfying about, I was doing research preparing for the show about these great country storytellers and comedians that came out of the depression and the dust bowl and they were a voice for rural america in a time that rural america really didn't feel like they had a voice and they were connecting with them it was minnie pearl jerry clower all of these great iconic american figures who were telling these stories that this audience, this demographic could connect with. Um, and you didn't have to have, you know, a PhD and you didn't have to, it, they were just simple truths, simple mm -hmm. truths. And I, I, I think about those, those uh, rural country comedians every time I, before I go on stage and just, just stand in your feet, tell the line, tell the story. And, um, people seem to, to really like those jokes and like yeah. those truths, those little kernels, for lack of a better term, of <laughs> wisdom um, that Peanut gets to share. Have you ever pitched your own uh, jokes in there or is it all? Have I ever, I can't, I <laughs> could never be as uh, brilliant as Robert. So I, 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 listen, I'm just grateful to say his words. Um, you know, when I get to work with Andrew Durand, who's one mm -hmm. of the great act we play brothers and that's really the heart of peanut is the well-being and the safety and the happiness of his brother that is his focus and he will stop at nothing to make that happen and that's that's the heart of peanut for me yeah, yeah. you mentioned um the sort of you know appealing to those rural uh truths and it's really interesting that it, the show to me kind of takes these tropes or stereotypes of mm -hmm. farm folk, you know, small mm -hmm. town rural folk, mm -hmm. and flips it on its head because it's a, you know, it's an accepting place. It's a diverse place. What is it like to sort of play with that and see the audience it's, reaction? It's one of the most satisfying things. And there have been so many people after the show that have stopped me and said, oh, we're from Iowa. We're from Ohio. We're from Nebraska. We saw this. We thought it would be a show for us. And it's the first time we've ever heard our voices in a show. And I, wow. they're relating to it in a way that I don't think, I think it's rare. And, you know, they'll say, that character's just like my aunt or that character is just like my cousin. Um, it, it's really, but yet the New Yorkers and the city people are having a ball too. Like it's miraculous what they have created because it is universal. It, it's really, I'm in awe of them. I'm in awe yeah. of the writing. Yeah. Do you do you recognize any of it uh, yourself for your own upbringing? Because I know if I've heard correctly, you were a rodeo clown. I was uh, that, in years true. past. That was my childhood from five to fifteen. I did it till my sophomore year of high school, and we did the rodeo circuit all in Texas and Oklahoma. And um, you know, my grandparents had this property in rural Texas that my mom still lives on today, and um. Absolutely, I connect with it. You know, there's these guys at the grocery store in town, which is a blinking yellow light. It's a township. It's not even a red light. And they sit on the outside the store. They have bottles of Coke and they put peanuts in the bottles of Coke. And so I always think of those guys. And I was like, oh, peanut. Okay, that's... <laughs> Do you ever try, have you ever put peanuts in a bottle of Coke? It's not a bad thing. That is a new one to me. I have never put peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's satisfying. They're on to something. Um, and it's the kind of town where you would 
get go to the grocery store and you would write on a tab like I had a carton of milk and a thing and you would pay your tab at the end of the month. It wasn't you wouldn't pay with every visit. Um, so I get these people. I know these people. I love these people. Um, and I find those people, you know, accepting and beautiful in a wonderful way. Oh, this is a crazy story too. That I think you'll appreciate. So I was getting a new air conditioner unit for my mom in this little town in Texas. And this guy came and my mom has these pictures in the living room and all over the house of shows that I've done. And there's a picture of Hedwig on the piano mm -hmm. and, um, in full regalia. And so this guy comes to fix the air conditioner and, you know, you would have thought that this guy was, you know, country. So he's looking, looking around the house, fixing the air conditioner and he looks at the picture and he's like, is this you in this picture? I said, it is me. And he was like, Oh, are you, that's really you. And I said, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm an actor. And I was in this musical called Hedwig. And he was like, my son's a drag queen. It's my favorite wow. thing. We go to Houston and all of my friends think I'm crazy, but I love it. And then he starts listing all of these great queens from RuPaul's. Do you know this person? Do you know this person? Do you know that? Oh, that's my favorite because of this, this, that. You that's just amazing. never know, right? <clears throat> you just never know. The world yeah. is far more, I think, inclusive than sometimes we see on television or social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the show I think is a great uh, representation of that. Yeah. Speaks to that quite nicely. It really um, does. Yeah. You know what I was I was looking at before I went to talk to you. I realized you this show is actually the first time since the Wedding Singer you've been on Broadway. Is that correct? It's like yeah. sixteen years, which I didn't realize because I think of you as you know just an yeah. ever present theater person. Oh. Um, yeah, it's true. It's, but it's the. Been you know, I feel like the industry and theater in general has gone through so many changes. We've had to go through a pandemic. What kind of feels different to you now, if you think about the last time you were here? Well, you know, I love Broadway. There's no place I'd rather be, whether I'm watching a show or on the stage. I love it. I love it. And I've, you know, over the past 16 years have, have had off-Broadway opportunities and regional theater opportunities. And I've had some wonderful television jobs and experiences that I treasure and have really just been so satisfying, but there is nothing like Broadway. There's nothing like it. And I have noticed, um, you know, we've only been doing, we've only done 28 shows. So uh, maybe I'm still discovering what this new Broadway is like, but I, it's certainly more inclusive and it is certainly more for everyone in the most wonderful, fabulous, gorgeous way that I could ever imagine in the audience and behind the scenes. It's just, it's, um, it's everything that the theater is and has always been. The theater has always been a loving, accepting place where every, speaking for myself, every little country oddball finds their tribe. You know what I mean? Everybody, every outsider finds a home in the theater and we accept everybody and we love everybody, but there is, um, it's really, it's vibrant now. It's thriving. It's vibrating. Um, I just, I know I'm just spewing ad nauseum about how much I love it, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of those things you stepped away uh, to do uh, was on, on TV was Monarch with, with Susan yes. Sarandon. Yes. And when I realized that, because the last time you and I were together, we were discussing Glow, where you worked with That's Gina right. Davis. That's so right. you have now worked with Thelma and Louise. I sure have. Is that have something worked. you geek out? Because I would, if I was in your shoes, I'd be geeking out to Susan Sarandon on set with that. Are you kidding? No, it's the first thing that I told her. I was like, <laughs> you're never going to believe this. My last TV show I got to be on was with Gina Davis. And she couldn't believe it. Um, and I know I'm just both Thelma and Louise that was never on. I could have never even imagined that that can be a possibility. Um, I'm waiting for, um, you know, Brad to give me a phone call so mm -hmm. we can just get that, you know, triumvirate taken care of, but. We'll just get the whole cast, the whole, that's, every project. That's every. That's, that's how you can select projects. That'll be a good tactic. That's um, so true. <laughs> You know, I just, I just adore Susan Sarandon. 
I mean, she's just, she's the greatest. I mean, I love Gina Davis too. We had a ball, we had a ball, but Susan lives in New York and there's more of an opportunity to, you know, um, connect with her. And she's just, yeah, Thelma and Louise, who knew? Wonderful. Um, well, going back to, to this show before I have to wrap up with you, um, because you're talking about how fabulous and inclusive it is. And alongside that, it's just really rare, I think, to see a truly original musical comedy because there's so much pressure on Broadway musicals. Um, so it's just rare to, to go into one that's original where you're just going in to have a good time. Um, how have you observed kind of audiences responding to that does it feel different from other shows you've done in that vein well i've done six uh uh, uh shucked is my sixth broadway show mm -hmm. so yeah tommy Monkey, rocky Rock, Chitty, Chitty, Baby, wedding singer okay five so this is the sixth and i will say the five before have all been based or inspired by a movie mm -hmm. this is the first original ground up Broadway musical I have ever done. And Tommy was in 1994. So that's a long time um, to not have done like an original. You know, I did The Wild Party Off Broadway, an original cast of that. Um, but that's based on the, you know, the poem. Sure. So it really is refreshing i think the audience is so energized by it it feels like the greatest like wash of new it, it, they're discovering every single line they don't know what's coming next they don't know what to expect they've never heard any of this they don't know where the story's going they don't know they're discovering the characters for the first time it's unlike anything i've ever ever been a part of this, the audience reaction to this show in the past four weeks. It is thrilling, surprising. I knew it was wonderful. I knew the show was wonderful, but I did not know that audiences would connect on it this way. I'm so grateful. Have I said that 14 times? <laughs> yeah, I'm so grateful. Well, it's worth repeating. We're grateful for, for a great new musical comedy. So Kevin, yeah. thank you Who so much. love a musical comedy? Who doesn't? Yeah, love no one. No one. If As heard by you, you can tell like with musical. the audience. I know. If somebody says they don't like musical comedies, I'm always like, mm, well, I don't know. Can I trust? I don't you? trust you. I don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're out there watching and you want to go uh, have a good laugh, to come see Shucked and stay tuned to Gold Derby. Keep subscribed with us throughout this season for all of our updates. Kevin, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. I love to have Gold you. Derby. I love it. I'm a subscriber. <laughs> Oh, we love to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, so much.